today on The Happy House. Learn how to make your own envelopes and gift tags using upcycled paper products. And I'm going to share my family's banana bread recipe with you. And this is the way we've always done it. It's the way my mom did it and the way my grandma did it. And make space and get organized by converting a bookcase into a useful mudroom. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm happy. <laughs> I live in a quiet town outside of Minneapolis with my family. The real happy house is far from quiet. <laughs> I learned early on things are much easier with a little help. I also have a few tricks of my own to share. It's go time, people. Welcome to the happy house. Whenever I receive a gift or a note from my friend Peggy, it's always so beautiful. The paper choices, it's incredible. And she revealed to me that it's all upcycled. Is this correct? That's Peggy? right. So you make it all yourself. I do. I'm not a hoarder, but there's a couple of things <laughs> that I am passionate about or really enjoy. And one is paper goods, all kinds of paper. One of my favorite things is going to thrift stores and looking for cool maps old calendars that people give away. I mean, who doesn't want like a gift tag made out of an old like 1960s recipe book? Like how silly is that? I want this punch right now. <laughs> right, don't you want like <laughs> note tags with like meatloaf on them? Well, it's interesting though because we, we joke, but that is a very colorful bowl of punch and it, a gift tag is only this big. Yeah. So like a pretty orange on there or mm -hmm. something, okay? How cute is this? Like for little kids, you know, cards or envelopes? Look at music, like little kid music. How mm -hmm. sweet is that? So really taking things that have been cast off and yep. making yep. them new again. Old, old calendars. I think they're the prettiest designs in there. You yep. can make bookmarks, envelopes. And I see we've got these templates here. And you can buy them mm -hmm. at a paper store or you can make your own. And here is one, if you don't find the, the size that you want, I took an envelope that I did like and traced it out and cut it out and made my own template. Basically spreading it out flat, yeah. yep. tracing around it. On kind of a heavier cardstock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I actually made that one from okay. this. So I noticed then it's of course sealed and it makes the envelope. How glue do you stick, do that? Glue stick or double sided tape, whatever. Or people have fancy glue dot things. I don't have that. Nothing fancy? Nothing fancy, okay. no, no. But there are these handy dandy templates yes. of course and that you can buy and yep. use again and again and again. Mm -hmm. About how much is one of these cards? do you think? Like a whole set, like a five of these is like $9.99. Oh, that's not that bad. No. no. Yeah, and use them over and over and mm -hmm. over. Okay, right. so then what do you do with all these things? So children's books are awesome for little kids, like Richard Scary, and I just cut envelopes out, and then you can cut your own little cardstock. Oh, what a great gift oh, to yeah, give somebody. Know. Yes. It be any occasion. If I give somebody a pack, I just put a little twine around it, and I send some little uh, seals in there because this little flap, it's not, there's no, people try to lick it or something and there's yeah. nothing there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, right. so we've got note card note sets. Cards. Tags. Gift tags. tags. I'm kind of a crazy tag lady. These are pretty nifty. These are from a paint swatch book. Like I bought an old fan, mm -hmm. you know, of like Benjamin yeah. Moore or whatever it was. And I just, you know, they have these handy dandy punches. You stick the paper in there, you punch it out. I'm like, and then you have a tag. Yeah. It's really cute. They're super fast. You can sit there and watch TV and just crank out like and thousands. So you've done these like different colored strings. Where do you find this? Just like your, your basic craft store or wherever. Yeah, you get okay. yarn, yarn, thrift store, dollar store. Do you want to come read my yarn collection? Yeah, hello. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Then what's, what's next? Um, I just, I don't know why, back to this goofy 1960s recipe books. I like to cut out like images Characters. and just stick them on little bags. I don't know. This would be so neat if you were having like book club or something mm -hmm. at your house or like a little ladies lunch and you wanted to put a small favor or something favor. special for everybody. I mean, it would be, it'd be really cute to do that. Okay, so bags. Yeah. All right, and then I think this is so great. You could personalize and monogram these for people oh, by doing yeah. like an initial. Card. Every note card could have just like an O at the top if your last name happens to be Olson, which it does. Mine does. Coming your way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like how I just asked for Peggy to make me <laughs> some note cards? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, I mean, there's just no end to what you can do with these. So mm -hmm. using the tags to 
give to people on gifts, but or sending as a gift. Of tags. Like yeah. I would love to get a whole stationery set. Yeah. It's a great oh, gift. it just you just amped it up from uh -huh. doing the O's. Now it's a whole set. Mm -hmm. I just think it's really neat the way you take something that's a whole page and snip it down into this little part and it's so pretty yeah and these are books that are you know have torn covers and ripped pages and aren't going to be used for anything mm -hmm. and they're being put to good use and people like it a lot of times when someone gets into a craft or a hobby the investment is so right. expensive and this is very minimal you maybe could buy a couple of these punches that you use over and over basic Tiny scissors scissors um, and then oh this is a score I happen to know bone right? folder that, bone folder one, yes. you're right, one end is a score. One, one end is a score on one. So for making your envelopes, but a few basic tools, things you probably have around the house and you're ready to go. That's it. Can we make something right now? Let's do it. Okay, first of all, I saw earlier this page from an old calendar and I really love these jars of vegetables. So I think it would be cute to make a tag. Do you, what do you think about that? Do a tag because it won't be big enough for the, uh, for an envelope. But okay. yep. So there's a rectangle tag cutter yeah. and a circular awesome. cutter. This is going to fit in and I'm going to get what I want on my tag. All right. Voila. Look at that. Little canned tomatoes. So then we're just going to use a hole punch, mm -hmm. punch a hole, and pick out some yarn or mm -hmm. some string. And You would pick out yarn? I would, because I have, I have some. Okay. And then just put that through, and it's ready to go. The nice thing about this is it does happen to have a plain back, yeah. so it's really easy to write on. I noticed some of the other tags that didn't have a plain back, you put like a sticker on there so they could, so someone could write on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I think I'm ready to move on to something more complicated. Envelope? Envelope, yes. So let's find a template here. I'm, I'm going to use this one, which is just okay. like a basic envelope. Ooh, I like yeah. this one. That's really pretty. OK, so pencil, put your, put your put template, template down. Over. And I kind of move this around so I can, like, you know, That's what looks good, best. Yes, yeah, so for the main part of my envelope, I'm going to position it over the main part of the image that I want to see. And then All right. trace around and then trace. it. Do I do anything with these lines here? No, nope, just finish right out. Did you do right there? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. I lost okay. interest. All I'm right. just kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. So I can see now that I've got the shape of my envelope. Um, and I was a little intimidated by this because I was thinking you might be using like an X-Acto knife, but you oh. told me it's just scissors. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. All right, I just sit in front of the television, watch a movie. An excuse to sit in front of the television is something I need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out. I think I finished. Okay. And we discovered that I possibly created two envelopes. That nice. looks good also. Yes, we can, we can work with this, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay, so now what happens? Now, uh, flip it over. Okay, both of them. <laughs> We're one, maybe. <laughs> okay, flip it over. All right, and then you're going to want to go fold here to here. Just fold? Yeah. Do I don't need to do anything with I, it? I don't have time for okay. measuring or lining it up. It just works. And oh, bone folder. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do that. There you go. Perfect. And I just take, I have like a big white eraser. I just go over the little pencil lines later. I was wondering about that because I was trying to cut inside the lines, but you And sometimes just... they don't even show, you yeah. know? Right here? Just down. And you do, I would just glue on there, but look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. I just made an envelope. You're done. Way to go. I'm ready. I'm going to go cut some paper <laughs> at my house. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Peggy. After these messages on the happy house, I'm going to share my family's banana bread recipe with you. I make banana bread pretty much every week for my family because we always have a few bananas that didn't get eaten. And a lot of times I'll give a loaf away and I don't wanna brag, but everybody is always saying, how did you make this banana bread? And the joke is on them because it's the most simple recipe ever. It's been passed down in my family from since I was, since I can remember, this is all that's the banana bread I've eaten. And it's only six ingredients, which I like because 
I'm not a very sophisticated baker, but I am able to make this banana bread. So I am going to show you my recipe today. First, you start out with a half cup butter. I always like to use unsalted butter when I bake. So I'm just gonna put in this softened butter. And then you use one cup sugar. I'm just gonna pour this in. Okay. Just one cup sugar. And one egg. I stir those ingredients around until they are well blended. And my butter and my bananas are always soft enough where I don't need to actually use even a mixer. I can just use my spatula. So I stir that until it's well blended. Then I add my bananas and I usually add about three ripe bananas to this batch. And this is gonna make about two loaves of banana bread or if you like a big loaf of banana bread, one really hefty loaf, but we always like to share a little bit around with friends and family. So make two. All right. What I also love about this is since there's only six ingredients and I make this almost every week, I have the recipe memorized. So it's really easy for me to make. All right, then once I've got my bananas in there, I use a potato masher to mash them up. And this is the way we've always done it. It's the way my mom did it and the way my grandma did it. I remember my mom used to work um, full time. She was probably one of the only moms that did work full time when I was growing up. And she though had Mondays off. And I remember coming home from school on Mondays and I could always tell when she made banana bread. Okay, so now we've got that mixed up to that consistency. And then we just add our flour and our baking soda. So it's two cups of flour. And notice how I don't have to mix dry ingredients and wet ingredients, I just mix it all together. So it's one bowl easy. And put that in. And then one teaspoon. Soda. We're going to mix that up. I have to be careful because I typically splatter flour everywhere. I'm not a neat baker. All right, so I'm going to get that mixed up. And you can see this is really fast. Oh, this is perfect. You can add nuts to this. I never do. Sometimes I do, when it's just about done baking, add some chocolate chips to the top, but I never mix them all the way in because then the inside gets too gooey and it doesn't bake up quite right. So, there it is. Perfect consistency. Looks just right. And then I either can use oil and flour on my pan or just spray it with a non-stick baking spray. and it's ready for the oven. Now the trick to my banana bread is this original recipe card that I received from my grandmother, which you can see is well loved, um, has the baking instructions at 250 to 300. This is lower than a lot of people bake their banana bread or any quick breads at. So actually I do mine right around 300 and nice and slow, it typically bakes for about an hour. And that is how the top stays moist and doesn't get crusty. I have my oven preheating, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this in. My bread's been baking a little bit over an hour and it's ready to take out. When I put this in, I set my timer for 50 minutes, 5-0, and then I check it at that point to see how it looks and then check it every five minutes or so. The trick is to just watch for a nice golden brown top. You can't check to see if it's done with a toothpick because the inside is going to be moist. So if you have a clean toothpick when you pull it out, 
in the end your bread is going to be too dry. So it's sort of a thing that needs to be babysat a little bit at the end, but it's well worth it. Who's hungry for some banana bread? For this recipe, visit thehappyhouse.com. Stay tuned for what's next. Coming up next on The Happy House, make space and get organized by converting a bookcase into a mudroom. Stay tuned. The Real Happy House is a very busy household full of lots of kids and with kids comes lots of stuff. So we are always looking for smart solutions to store our things. I'm here at Mama's Happy with Amanda and she is going to help me figure out where to put all of my kids very precious things and all the stuff that comes with being a busy house. You're not alone in fighting that battle. I mean, we hear that all the time. Customers come in looking for ways to corral all the stuff in their house. So one simple way is to take just your average bookcase. Now, maybe you have one on hand that you don't love the looks of. Paint it or used at a thrift store, um, anything like that. Okay, so here's one that, you know, could use a little love. Maybe in this case, I would paint it. It's got a few scratches on it. But it's really sturdy, which is what I think that's is important what, to that's look That's the for. important thing mm -hmm. to start with. I would agree with that. Adjustable sel shelves is an awesome feature when you're going to try to use it for different purposes. I don't know if your house is like mine, but I have an artist, and her art supplies are always all over the house. Yes. So one fun way to corral them is give her a place to put it all. Okay, so I've got just some different containers that we've used. These are just simple mason jars that we've, you know, given a little chalk paint love. And did you paint the outside or the inside? We On this, we painted the outside. Okay. Um, but we have done it where we paint the inside. And then you can buy these cute little um, tops where it, it's a nice thing for markers, for paint brushes. And these are great because they look nice too. I always like it when things yes. look nice. Yes. Well, usually I try to, if I'm corralling things, I'll try to have some type of container that looks nice enough to show. And then you can take the things that, you know, maybe you don't want everybody looking at and put them towards the bottom. Okay. Now these are just fun vintage locker baskets that I've picked up at different thrift stores. Um, it's a super fun find. You can use them for so many purposes. Yes. So that's a good one to corral, just the big junk. Um, old paint cans are fun. This is something I found and um, they make the cutest little containers. It's great and I love the whole repurposing, upcycling. I mean a lot of times not, you don't need yeah. to go buy something. You do new. not need to go buy new things right. to, to be your containers. You really, jars are cute. Um, so we'll just kind of load that up. We've done another thing we use around here are flower pots and we'll just put a little coat of paint on them and you know you can use those for markers, scissors, that type of thing. Okay All so right. then sometimes you think okay I really don't want everybody looking at that or when I have company over I don't really want them to be you know seeing all of the mess because maybe your daughter doesn't put them away as cute as you would. Oh, you're not talking about my daughter. She's, she's very neat. She's very neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have that in our house. <laughs> okay, so this is just a simple tension rod. And let me find the center here. You can crank it down to your desired width a little bit longer than your, where you need it to be. Mm -hmm. And then the tension is just what holds it in place. Now, yeah, look how cute long. that is. And nobody would ever know that there's a, a mess behind it. I love it. I love this. And... You were telling me that this is just a drop cloth? Yes, we just used a painter's drop cloth. That's kind of our go-to fabric around here. We love it for seat cushions. It's heavy. It's um, easy, easily washed. We snuck into Amanda's daughter's room, and Amanda's going to give us a quick tip on how to use a curtain. Okay, so trying to get your child to actually keep everything neat in their room is impossible. So I decided to quit trying. So instead, I just took that same simple tension rod and Wow, look what it's hiding. That simple tension rod is doing a pretty big job. So she can keep it as messy as she wants to, and I don't have to look at it. That's a great tip. Amanda, I don't have a mudroom, and you are gonna help me solve some of my clutter control problems. Is that right? I am. All right. So in this case, we're just using a larger bookcase. And now here we did add a couple coats of chalk paint quickly to it just to brighten it up. It was kind of that honey oak. Okay. Not, not my favorite. No. And so what if your mudroom or lack of mudroom looks anything like ours, generally the kids come in, they just throw everything on the floor. Right. Is that how yours looks? Pretty much. Okay, so one thing is you're taking your bookcase, you want to kind of think about, generally there's one shelf in the middle that's kind of your stabilizer. Okay. So that one is not movable. Okay, so then you want to plan your spacing around that particular shelf. So starting at the bottom, kind of a low one would be for shoes, and then 
for us, book, book bags are always all over the floor and stuff spilling out. So here we actually put hooks down low. So another way to do it is, so I have an eight-year-old, and so keeping her things down low, and then my 12-year-old could easily reach this. Okay. So think about your kids and how you want to stack the odds in your favor that they're going to actually use the thing, right? So taking Kate's jacket and her backpack and keeping it down low, and then we've got these cute little bins that we picked up. And again, just gave a quick coat of paint. You wouldn't need to do that. Um, you could use things that you've got around your house, anything that fits. We've given, you know, every child loves to see their name on something. And then the only other thing I would remember is just to, in some way, attach it to the wall. Okay. So just making sure that it's not going to. And that's important yeah. with all big pieces of furniture, especially when it's a big piece of furniture being used by little people. Yes, because they will step on this to climb up. Now you have put hooks on here. But as I feel behind, a lot of times these shelves are the backing is really thin. What did you do to reinforce it? So, so how do you make a, these? A sturdy? simple block of wood behind there that you actually then are screwing the hook into because you're right, many times this is a very inexpensive and thin, flimsy piece of wood. I might put like a surprise oilcloth pattern back here just to yeah. sort of personalize it and make it even more fun. That's a great idea. These are such great ideas and inexpensive upcycling, making things easy and functional for families. As always, amazing ideas. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you for having me. It looked funny. <laughs> it looked funny spinning. Uh,